Hey, Alex here again. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about government accounting. This is the 10th edition, Essentials of Accounting for Governmental and Non-for-Profit Organizations. I just want to talk about the Statement of Net Assets, which is part of the government-wide financial statements. So the Statement of Net Assets presents the asset, liability, and net asset balances measured on the accrual basis and economic resource measurement focus. So you, at the end of all the periods, you're going to take the modified accrual of the government funds and turn them back into normal accrual through a worksheet process. And we'll go over that. We'll get to that when we get to that. But for now, um, the entity's governmental business type activities, it measures, all, it measures all of it. It adds in the governmental activities and the business type activities. So it's kind of a summary. Um, together, the governmental and business activities compromise the primary government, the government as a whole. Similar information is presented in a separate column for the government's discreetly presented component units. Fiduciary activities, however, are not included in the government-wide statements. Prior year balances, however, are not included in the government-wide statements. Prior year balances may be presented, but are not required. Uh, assets are generally reported in order of liquidity, so a classified approach presenting separate totals for current particular capital assets, property equipment, are presented in the governmental activities column. Uh, this will not be the case when we examine the governmental fund basis financial statements. The capital assets include infrastructure and are reported net of accumulated appreciation. So it's whatever's left, whatever the actual balance is of book value. Uh, similarly, long term debt is presented in the governmental activities column of the government wide statement of activities, but is not presented for in the government funds in the fund balance sheet. So there's two separate things. Uh, the difference between assets and liabilities is called net assets and is reported in three categories. Invested in capital assets, net of related debt. It's computed by taking the capital assets less the accumulated appreciation and deducting out any outstanding debt that is related to financing that capital asset. So the leftover is, the, is that's what's going to be in the net assets. Um, Restricted net assets include resources that are restricted by law or external parties, including creditors, grantors, contributors, um, or constitutional provisions of the reporting government. The remaining amount, unrestricted net assets, is a plug figure that is determined by deducting the balance of the other two categories from the overall excess of assets over liabilities. So you get something like this. This would be an, um, an example, the city of Salem. It's a statement of net assets as of December 31st, 2012, primary government. As you can see, it goes assets first. The assets are presented first. And then it goes liabilities. And then the net assets. See how there's no equity? It's not considered equity in government. It's just net assets. It's Because no one owns it in a government, so it's just almost like a placeholder. You know, it's, it's, it just describes why, why it's there and what's it's restricted for and what you can, can or can't do with it. So it's actually pretty organized. Um, and you can see there's the governmental activities. So all the government, the you know, public works, taxes are all here. The business type activities, uh, water ut utilities, um, DMV, any place that provides a service for, for a price to the consumer. And then the primary government, which is them added up. They can actually, that's totaled. And then the component units, which are smaller government entities that they just add to it. Like, oh, we'll just throw you in there. We'll, we'll either blend you or we'll mix you with the others or we'll have you give you your own column. 
And that's exactly what they did there. And so this just shows the government's its position at the end of the year. And um, it's pretty useful. It really does sum it up. Um, and next, the next time we'll get to the government-wide statement of activities. We'll talk about that <clears throat> on a different day. Just wanted to run that by you. It helps me understand it better if I'm also explaining it. And so I'm just working in the lab here, accounting lab at SPSCC, and I had one person come in, but uh, helped her with her 201, the, the uh, beginning accounting, financial accounting. So one thing I find a lot is um, I do a lot of auditing. I check out a lot of stuff, and um, auditing, I'll eventually go over that. I have a, a book on auditing. I took the class here, and I've done some auditing at Great Wolf Lodge on their uh, revenue auditor, and it was spectacular. You know, you always need a double set of eyes because just because one person is done with it or created the work and is ready to submit it doesn't mean it's always correct. So I'll talk to you guys later, and I'm out.